there's three types of audio, digital, analog, and real. What we're calling real audio is technically analog in nature, but we'll be keeping them separate for the sake of this tutorial. Real audio, or sound waves that we hear, are longitudinal pressure waves. Longitudinal pressure waves. A sound source such as a snare drum, bass guitar, a hand clap, or a speaker, causes an unimaginably large amount of microscopic air particles to bash into one another. What follows can be demonstrated with the slinky. Start vibrating one end of the slinky, and you can see that the one wire bounces off another that bounces off another, and ultimately propagates that energy down the length of the spring. In reality, sound waves travel out in all different directions, but it's easier to understand if we picture only the most direct route from the sound source to the human ear. As the sound wave travels, we see areas where there are lots of air particles all smushed together. This is an area of high pressure. We also see areas where there are less air particles and they're more spaced apart. This is an area of low pressure. If we take a single point in space and we map the measurements of air pressure over time, then we end up with a visual representation of a sound wave. In fact, this is how microphones and recording works, which leads us on to analog audio. A microphone takes real audio and converts it to analog audio. A speaker does the opposite. It takes analog audio and converts it to real audio. The speaker diaphragm moves to create those longitudinal pressure waves that we hear as sound. Analog audio comes in different forms too, for example the grooves that are cut into a vinyl, or the pattern of realigned magnetic particles on a tape. Here's the definition of analog. Relating to or using signals or information represented by a continuously variable physical quantity such as spatial position, voltage, etc. So analog audio is a continuous signal. For this to make more sense, let's move on to digital audio. In digital audio, rather than having a continuously varying signal, which on a graph looks like this, we have a set of numerical values representing the amplitude of the waveform at specific points in time. These values plotted on a graph look like this. Each value or piece of data is called a sample and the amount of samples that we have per second of audio is called the sample rate. We also have something called bit depth, which is the amount of bits used for each sample. Computers work in binary, which means they can only understand two different states, like on or off. Binary represents these two states as the numerical values one and zero. Every time we increase our bit depth by one, we double the amount of values that our sample could represent. Most professional recordings are done using 24-bit bit depth, in which case each individual sample could be one of 16,777,216 different values. Digital audio is what we work with on a computer, so let's look at a real example. Here's an audio clip in Studio One. The waveform looks like a smooth continuous signal, but if we zoom in far enough we can see the individual points of data called samples. The door just joins up the dots for us to make the waveform easier to understand. For us to be able to hear anything, digital audio must first be converted to analog audio. Small devices called Digital to Analog Converters, or DACs, perform this joining up of the dots, and they turn the digital audio into analog audio with continuously varying voltage. This signal is what drives the sound in your headphones or speakers. Let's follow the audio on its journey through a real-life recording scenario. So we start here. A musician strikes the snare drum, causing it to vibrate. This vibration causes air particles to bash into one another and produces longitudinal pressure waves or sound waves that travel through the air. A microphone detects these variations in air pressure and converts them into an electrical signal with varying voltage. This is now analog audio. 
The electrical signal travels down the wire until it reaches an analog to digital converter, or ADC. This turns the continuously varying analog signal into digital audio, which is a set of data consisting of many samples. Now the producer presses play to listen to the recording. A digital to analog converter, or DAC, connects the dots between each sample to turn it into an electrical signal. The varying voltage in this electrical signal tells the speaker diaphragm when and how it should move back and forth. And the moving speaker diaphragm causes air particles to bash into one another, resulting in a sound wave. Our ears detect the variations in air pressure just like a microphone, and our brain interprets this as the sound that we hear. Real audio, or sound waves that we hear, are longitudinal, are longitudinal, real audio, real audio, or sound waves that we hear, are long, are longitudinal, are longitudinal, longitudinal, travel out in all, let's follow the, uh,